Welcome to Edison TV. We're joined today by Stephen Parker, Executive Chair, and John Reeder, CSO of Sarum. We're going to be focusing today on Sarum's recent expansion to the CNS space and potential for TIC2 JAK1 inhibition in neuroinflammatory conditions. Welcome. Thanks, it's great to be here. So, to get started, can you talk to us a little bit about what triggered this expansion into the CNS space and potential for the mechanism of action in the disease area? Yeah, sure. Um, several things all came together, really. So there's been a, an increased interest in the academic area around TIC2. Um, papers coming out in journals um, describing the action of TIC2 in neuroinflammatory disorders and diseases. Um, so a lot more evidence has come about the, uh, the mechanism of action of how a TIC2 inhibitor might uh, impact on these diseases. Um, I think there's been a lot more activity with other companies we've seen. So companies such as, for example, Biohaven, Pseudo, even BMS, um, have got involved with some um, brain penetrant TIC2 inhibitors. And I think the other thing is that we have a lot of experience with TIC2 ourselves. Obviously, our, our lead compound is SDC1801, which is, um, does not get into the brain, but it's designed for autoimmune diseases such as psoriasis, uh, dermatomyositis, and, and, and others. So we've built up over the years um, quite a bit of expertise in the, in the space of JAK inhibition, and particularly TIC2, JAK1, and we really wanted to make use of that. We've got um, a, a big compound collection, so a lot of data around uh, TIC2 inhibition, and we really wanted to make maximum use of that in the CNS space. Uh, we saw it as a good starting point. Um, and so what we did was to look into our existing compounds, take some of them, and actually test them uh, in a, a model of brain penetration. And we found that some of them, uh, three, got into the brain in usable quantities. So we saw that as a really good starting point for this, uh, for this program. Excellent. So crossing the blood-brain barrier tends to be quite a big challenge um, in this sort of disease area. So how do you go about designing drug candidates to overcome this? Yeah, it is a challenge. Um, I mean, the brain is very good at keeping unwanted chemicals out um, so there is a significant barrier to overcome it does let nutrients in uh, lets oxygen in obviously so there is there is scope uh, it's all about the design of the really the physicochemical aspects of the molecule so this is to do with um, its fundamental physical uh, properties okay so um, designing a, 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 a drug that is orally bioavailable is challenging and the sort of guidelines around the properties of a molecule that will allow you to take a, um, a, a drug by mouth and it will be absorbed into the system. Uh, I think with a brain, it's, it's an even more constrained set of properties, okay? So um, you have to get that balance of um, physical properties of a molecule right. You've still got to get the potency. And some of the mechanisms that we use in chemistry to uh, build potency actually have a negative effect on brain penetration. Okay, so you're always trying to balance these different properties to um, have a, a, a potent selective molecule that crosses the blood-brain barrier and gets in there. So it's just a, more of a challenge. You're operating in more of a constrained uh, drug discovery space. Right? So, John, what could be some of the key challenges specifically with TIC2 JAK1 inhibition for CNS indications? Um, well, so it's a question of maintaining this isoform selectivity, this, this selectivity pattern within the JAK family. So we particularly want to inhibit TIC2 JAK1. We don't want to be inhibiting JAK2 or JAK3. We see um, potential side effects coming in from inhibition of those targets. So we need to maintain that uh, selectivity profile. We need to uh, maintain the selectivity profile against the broader kinome. That's all, all kinases and all other <laughs> yeah, receptors uh, yes. and every other potential drug target. Um, so you're operating within those constraints. Um, and then, as, as I mentioned in, uh, in a previous answer, we've got to get the molecule into the brain. Not only does it have to get into the brain, but it also has to be there uh, for, for um, free drug levels, okay? So small molecule drugs get bound up by proteins, and those molecules are not available to interact with the target. So the brain protein milieu is different to the plasma protein, so we need to make sure that we've got good levels of free drug in the brain without having huge levels of free drug in the, in the uh, systemic, in the periphery. Okay, so that's another challenge that we have to overcome. 
Um, I think we're starting from a good place. Uh, certainly our pharmacophore, our, our molecules as they exist have a, a, a good selectivity pattern. They are, are predominantly inhibitors of TIC2 with some JAK1 activity. So if we maintain that, um, we'll steer clear of this JAK2, JAK3 activity. That's important. We've also demonstrated with SDC1801 a really clean safety profile. Um, so we know that inherently the molecule, this, this, this pharmacophore that we're using uh, can generate molecules with good PK properties and good safety profile. So we're starting from a good place and uh, I think we'll come on to it. We've started this collaboration with Receptor AI. They're going to help us out and bring their expertise to bear on this problem as well. So we're really excited about that. So Stephen, you recently signed a collaboration deal with Receptor AI. Can you elaborate a little bit on the, the deal terms and the economics? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, well, we're very pleased to be working with Receptor AI. We do think that uh, having spoken to several players in the field, they really do mesh with or mesh with our strengths very, very well. Um, the, the idea, of course, here is that using the AI toolbox, um, we can take the, um, the parameters that John has been talking about uh, and we can carry out a multivariate uh, analysis in order to try drive down to some key targets which we can then pursue uh, in the more traditional wet chemistry uh, and drug development form. Uh, so we're, 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 they're very, very strong in, in this area. Uh, we've had very good interactions with them um, and taking the three base molecules that John again was referring to, um, we can then expand on that to try and optimize the key parameters in, in order to maintain our free drug activity for the TIC2 JAK1 targets and also, of course, get through the, the blood brain barrier as, as we were talking about. So the um, key part in many ways of, of this uh, is, is very much that first drug discovery, molecule discovery focus, uh, where we are able, using the, the AI tools, uh, to, to torpedo uh, the, the long uh, exercise that traditional drug discovery had right the way down into what we hope will be sort of four to five months uh, in the first instance. Uh, and coming out of that, we're looking to have a family of molecules that we can then commission uh, a, a contract a research organization to, to manufacture, and we could then do wet lab uh, testing to, to find which of those is going to come out, or which of the, the a small number which will come out best to take forwards. Um, as I said, we're, we're hoping that we're going to have um, some meaningful answers by the end of the year or early in, in, in the next year. Um, and uh, very much hoping that coming out of that will be a molecule that we are sufficiently excited about that we can take into discovery with, with our, a sarium discovery compound number going forwards. Now, the, the economics you were talking about, we've not disclosed uh, the detailed economics, but there are two factors which are very important to us. And in fact, was a key factor in choosing to work with Receptor as well as their, 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 their technological skills. Um, and that is that anything that comes out of this, this uh, collaboration, uh, we will own 100% of the intellectual property for that going forwards. Um, which is great, of course, because royalty stacking is something you don't want to get involved in if you can avoid it. Sure. Um, and secondly, that um, there aren't any uh, milestone payments down the line. Uh, we have a, a commercial agreement uh, where we're paying them for the work they're doing and rewarding them for the work they're doing. Um, but once we have finished each phase, that is the end of, of that particular contract. So appreciate this may be a little bit premature, but can you talk to us a little bit about your thoughts on what the target CNS indication may be? Well, yes. I mean, John is probably the, the, the greater expert in this area, but I must say I'm personally very excited about the possibilities for multiple sclerosis. Um, that is, of course, in many ways, a, a classic autoimmune condition affecting the nervous system. Uh, in the same, in a similar way to the way that uh, we're looking at other autoimmune conditions arising from either 1801 or could be treated with 1801 or with 1802. 
Um, but there's also quite a lot of interest around at the moment uh, with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Um, those, of course, have proved to be tough nuts for uh, bigger companies than, than us. Uh, and I would imagine that if, if that is the route we go down, we will be looking to partner uh, sooner rather than later in order to try and maximize that. And of course, you know, as, as ever, um, most importantly, we're looking to get drugs which will help patients suffering from what are terrible, terrible diseases. So uh, we will do what we need to do to, uh, to, to, to optimize that. So can you comment on the competitive space for TIC2 JAK1 inhibition in CNS? And then maybe talk about what the commercial opportunity could be should you be successful. Yes, I mean, there, there are increasing, uh, there's increasing uh, activity and, and, and John has referred to both academic and, and, and corporate activity in the space. And we are seeing some clinical trials from companies like Biohaven uh, and, uh, um, and others who, who are uh, further ahead of us. But in many ways, uh, we would see that as giving us confidence that uh, this is not uh, a futile area to be, to be looking. Um, so I think that um, the commercial, I mean, the, the level of unmet meet, need, which is a, always a good place to start, um, it is huge in all of these conditions. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, uh, there won't be very many people these days who don't know somebody suffering from uh, MS or indeed with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. Uh, and, and you will know uh, exactly how debilitating these conditions are and, 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 and the the impact it has on both life and, and, and career. Um, so, uh, so, so I think that the, the opportunity is absolutely there. Um, the markets are still to be established in many ways. Um, and I think that uh, but it, you, you have to believe that uh, those markets are going to be very, very considerable indeed for those, the drugs that come through. So looking ahead, could you summarize for us the key milestones and expected timelines for the CNS work? Uh, yes, so the, so the work is underway with, with Receptor and we're, we're talking to them on a, on a regular basis. Um, we're hoping to have um, data sets back um, towards the end of the year, at the end of the year, um, which we can then take, as, and as I said before, we, they, those in silico data need to be translated into real molecules um, because we, uh, we, we need real molecules to, to carry out the, the preclinical uh, testing and, and, and indeed to establish which of those drugs are going to work in, in, in real life uh, laboratory conditions and then hopefully real life going forwards. Um, so uh, we're looking to have a, uh, we think we're going to have a very busy year in CNS uh, in 2026. Fantastic. Thank you. That's all the time we have today. But if our audience would like to learn more, please refer to the Edison website where we have Siren's research freely accessible. Thank you very much again for joining us today.